Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to give the interior a complete and utter overhaul. The front seats are coming out, rear seats are coming out, to give everything a good deep clean for all these new interior panels going in. So, let's get started. Right, let's get into stripping this interior down. Now the first thing we do is remove this rear seat, which is held in by two uh, 12 millimeter bolts, just about there. And then the front seats are held in by, um, I'm not sure how many bolts yet, but we've got like, I think it's two 50 millimeter bolts at the back, and then there's another one at that side. So we'll get to quickly whipping all these out and then get this front and back seats out. Then we'll get a good clean, because as you can see here, it's absolutely disgusting. Now, it should come out okay, they're clean, but we'll see how far we get and let's get to getting these seats out. Nothing to see here. <laughs> right, that's the rear seats out now. It must have, it's actually not too bad in here, like, dirty-wise, I mean, I've seen a lot worse, but still, we'll get a good cleaner, still a bit of muck here that needs hoovered up and getting a wee wiped down, but uh, it won't take much work to get it nice and clean. So, now we're moving to the uh, front seats, so let's get cracking. Okay, a bit of a struggle, that's one seat out. It's a bit, bit mucky, but it's not too bad. A lot of kind of foam, but oh, nothing will, nothing that Hoover won't clean up. So, I'm not going to show you me doing the other side because you kind of already know the process. It's just one bolt there, two there, and I'll say there's two at the front. So it's really simple enough, and they're all 15mm uh, bolts. So, I'll crack on this side, and I'll get the camera back out once I've got all the seats out. Right, that's all the seats fully stripped out. Now, as I said, it's still not too bad, I mean, it's not too dirty. Also remember, when you're taking these bolts out, just kind of put them in, back in the same place, kind of save you losing bolts and things like that. So, next step, we're going to get the hoover out, give us a good clean, and then we're going to give all the dashboard a good uh, trim dressing, so get it nice and clean, and get everything looking really nice for all this nice new interior panels going on. So, let's get started. Oh yeah, I actually can't believe I just found it underneath this carpet. Go check this out, where is it? <laughs> You'll never guess what I just found underneath the carpet while cleaning the car, right? Actually Japanese money, all the way from Japan. Look at that. Now that's cool, that is really cool. All Japanese money. <laughs> so this actually stayed, in the, this has come all the way from Japan in the car. That is fantastic, I love finding things I guess. Look at that. That's brilliant. Right, that's the interior of a good Hoover. I think it's come out okay with a general Hoover, to be honest. I mean, it's in really good condition for being a really kind of old 27-year-old carpet, but as I said, I'm pretty surprised, I'm really actually quite surprised I found that uh, money um, underneath the uh, carpet. It just goes to show, you know, with old cars like this, there's you know, things like that that give them character, and you just don't get that on new cars. That's why I'm not a fan of new cars, because they don't have much character. And I mean, let's be honest, right, you wouldn't find things like that under the carpet of a new car, would you? I mean, that's fantastic. Just finding small things like that. But anyway, enough waffling. Um, I think what I want to do next is give up everything, I guess, a good clean, um, clean all the kind of trim and things like that. Then we can get into installing the trim that goes there, there, and around there. So, let's get started. Right now, we're going to start cleaning this area first. I'm going to do the boot a separate day because like it's a whole different kind of area. So, we're just going to do kind of like this bit kind of here, under the seat. Um, because the boot, I'm kind of using at the moment for like just dumping tools in, stuff like that. So. I'm going to clean that probably, that'll be the last thing to do because obviously it's going to get dirty anyway with just me dumping tools in it and things like that so we'll do that for another video but for now we're cracking on cleaning this now what we're going to use to clean it is ugh, this stuff again um, just a quick, I would spray, let it soak in for a few minutes then just get it wiped down and then see how well it comes up so let's get started Right, 
What's under the back seat done now? I think we'll agree for a 27 year old car, that's going to come up quite well. I mean, look at that. Obviously, the more the more time you'll, you spend on something like this, the better it'll be. But I mean, that's quite good considering I just gave it a quick job. So I say that's definitely a good job. So the next one we'll tackle now is probably, I think what we'll do is put the rear seats back in. And then we'll, and we'll crack on with putting all this interior trim back in. So I think that's, that's, that's the um, plan of action. So let's get cracking. Right, also, in case anyone's wondering how these rear seats kind of go into the car, they're held in by a few hooks at the top. Just right there. There and there, and then at the bottom, there's about uh, what are they? Yeah. Ah, oh, here we are. Yeah, there's, a, there's a bolt there, right there, and then one there, and then one over there. Was actually then the bolts go through there and then into that hole. So, that, with that said, let's get this in. Right, that's the rear seat in, and also just to, to kind of tidy things up a bit, put some brand new clips in here because obviously, as you can see on this side, for example, some idiot just didn't bother put clips back in again. I'd, just, I can't stand people that do that, just doing half hours jobs. So it's was lucky, we've got a nice box here full of absolutely brand new clips. So it's really handy just to put brand new clips in whenever you see things missing. So as you can see, there's one in there right now. Look, nice and secure. So the next thing we'll do is put the rear bench in. So let's crack on with that. That's the rear seat in. And it's actually quite cool, you know, when you're sitting here with no front seats. It's like a little kind of cinema or something like that. It's quite cool. Like, there's plenty of room and things like that. But anyway, the next job we're going to crack on with is obviously installing the uh, heater surrounds, which is like all these bits there. And then obviously, we're going to install the, er, the Nardi steering wheel and obviously put back in the uh, Speedo surround. So, I'm actually looking forward to seeing how well it's going to look when it's all done. Because um, it's been bugging me for quite a while. Obviously, these bits here and things like that have all been really. Well, you've probably seen a previous video how. The original ones were all kind of badly painted and stuff like that, so I'm really looking forward to seeing all the original parts put back in. Um, also, that's the other speedo one as well. I kind of did that off camera, but um, also kind of looks quite good as well. So, let's crack on with uh, the dashboard parts. I've just given the dashboard a wee wipe down. Now, what I've used, which I'm actually quite surprised how nice it is, it's honestly Tesco's own brand dashboard wipes. Now, honestly, don't knock this until you try it, because this stuff smells absolutely really nice. And it's actually made the dashboard quite nice and shiny. I mean, it's just to show you, you don't need to pay a lot of money for you know kind of good car products, but yeah, enough of that. We're just popping these all like a dashboard um, vents now. Here we have the center bit, and obviously the other bit here. Then once I've done all looking dashboard bits, we're gonna put the cherry on the cake, which is the Nardi steering wheel. So let's get into it. Right, that's the dashboard trim on. Now I must say, quite happy with that. Looks a lot fresher and things like that now that everything's not tacky and all kind of got paint peeling off it. But there's one thing that's gonna bug me and now I know I'll probably change it at some point. Now this center trim here, yeah, I st it's still better than the one that was on the car, but it's gray. Now that's gonna bug me. So yeah, at some point I'll probably just try and get a black one to match the rest because when you look at it from like a distance, you can kind of see how it doesn't kind of match. I mean, obviously it doesn't match because it's gray, but it's something that's gonna bug me. So <laughs> yeah, I'll change that again at some point. But nonetheless, it still looks better than, than what was on the car originally, which was all, you know, really bad paint job, all kind of paint peeling off it and things like that. So yeah, still looks better than what was on the car originally. So next job, we're gonna take off the steering wheel. Now, I'm probably gonna take the steering wheel off first and then put on the steering wheel kind of, this bit here, look. Probably put this on then. Be a lot easier rather than have to put this on with the steering wheel on, if you know what I mean, because, you know, not a lot of room there. So that make things easier for yourself and just, you know, we'll take the steering wheel off, then install the cover, 
and then we'll put the new Nordic steering wheel on. So it's gonna look amazing, can't wait. So let's get it on. To remove the steering wheel, what you want to do first is there's two torques, which is what you can see in the camera. There's one there, and then there's obviously one at the kind of other side, which I don't know if you can see. Yep, right there. So there's two at both sides, and it, the size is a, uh, what is it? Uh, it's a T30 torque, so that's what you need to remove the airbag, and then there's a bolt in behind the cover. So we'll hook this off and then remove the bolt. Now, the socket you need to use to remove the steering wheel is a 17mm, which you can see here, look, that goes, goes on like so. And then, it, this, this one should be too tight, I mean, also, when you're moving the steering wheel, make sure you can uh, put the nut on like a few uh, threads, so when you pull on the steering wheel, it doesn't come flying and hitting your face. So, but I've already had the steering wheel off, so, um, because, I'm not sure if I ever mentioned this, but the steering wheel design originally was like a really cheap eBay, kind of like, aftermarket steering wheel, it was in red. It was actually made of plastic, it wasn't even real leather, so it didn't take me long before I got rid of the uh, aftermarket one and then put this one on, which I got from my friend Jack, which was just temporary steering wheel. The car's again used at the moment, so but to be honest, I don't know why I bothered, but nonetheless, we're going to get the Nardi one on, which I've been wanting for quite a while. So let's get the steering wheel off and get the Nardi one on. With a few thuds and a pull, that's the uh, old steering wheel off. I don't know why it's such a pain in the arse right to get it off the spline, considering it's not corroded and things like that, obviously, because obviously it's not corroded at all. But yeah, it's, it's always a bit of a challenge getting off the spline, but nonetheless. Right, so the next thing is to install the trim that goes around here. So, now there tends to, I don't actually I remember how where the screws go, because I've actually lost some of them, but I've got most of the screws kind of down here. But we've got a few plugs here to plug in for you, like your. Um, lights and bits and bobs like that. So, anyway, let's crack on. Oh, what a pain in the arse. Had a bit of problem there. This thing wouldn't go on because these little kind of uh, brackets here that hold on the uh, speedo, they're actually like the wrong way around, so they weren't locating properly. Like, you can you see. Yeah, they weren't basically locating properly up here. These were they're actually like flipped the wrong way around. So, basically what I had to do was remove these off the speedo and like kind of flip them around so they're like basically facing the right way. Oh, it took me ages to figure it out, to be honest, but never mind. So basically, everything's just kind of getting there now. All you need to do is just kind of screw in the speedo there in the four corners, like there, there, and kind of like down there, and obviously at the other side. And then I can get back into kind of plugging the uh, things for the surround back in, and then hopefully this should fit properly now. Because for a while there, I was wondering why this wasn't fitting properly, and it was because those stupid brackets were obviously not on the right way around. Um, Easy mistake to make, especially when obviously you've not been working on Subaru before. But at least I know now. You live and you learn. But yeah, for anyone else, in case you're wondering if you have the same problem, that's why. So, let's crack on. I tell you, it's no fun right working in the heat, trust me. <sighs> Absolutely roasting. But nonetheless, that's the speedo surrounding. Um, I don't have a problem trying to find the right screws because obviously people in the past have had this on and off before. So obviously the original screws and things like that have gone missing. But nonetheless, that is it on. And it's always in solid, it's not going anywhere. It's obviously, I'm actually find some screws that fit quite well out of a voxel, so that's the mirror. Um, and so one under there. Because it's quite handy, I've kept quite a lot of screws off the old voxels I've worked on in the past, and they've come in quite handy as you can see. Oh, it's kind of all focus size, but yeah. Just put a couple of torques in there and some normal screws under there. So I think that's good. It's absolutely solid, like I said, not going anywhere. Everything's plugged in. There's about there's one plug on this side for the um, hazard lights, and obviously there are like what, one, two, three plugs in behind there. It's a little bit tricky to start off with to get them plugged in, but it's not too bad. A bit of wiggling, and you'll get there in the end. Right, I think we all know we all know now what's next, and that is the Nardi steering wheels. So let's get it on. Also, don't forget to lube up your shaft before you stick it in the L. Giggity. Now, 
I think we'll agree that looks so much better than any of the aftermarket shite that you see people put on these cars. I mean, that looks so nice. I mean, you just can't beat an RD Steamroll, can you? Especially with those nice white dials as well and all nice original panels. It does really kind of make a much better kind of original look. Really, really happy. That looks fantastic. But now, I think it's time to kind of tidy up here, get the front seats in, and then I think we'll get on some, we'll maybe do some cinematics of the interior. All clean and looking absolutely fantastic. So, let's get these front seats in. Right, that's the interior back together again. I didn't really bother um, recording me doing the seats again because you kind of already know from the first time when I did them. Um, but now, let's just get a look at this interior, how good it looks now. Let's say that at some point I'm going to source a black one to replace this grey one, but this is just it was just better than the one that was on the car originally, so... But never mind, everything's back together and I'm really happy. That looks a lot better, everything's clean and tidy. Yeah, job well done. happy with what we actually got done today, um, considering it's really quite humid and hot and tell you, there's nothing worth it than working on a fucking car right when it's really hot and stuffy. But nonetheless, we got the job done. There was quite a lot of stuff I did off camera, like, you know, trying to get things to fit and a lot of kind of mucking about, but main thing is, we got the job done and I'm really happy with it. So, as always, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe if you're new, like the video if you enjoyed it. As always, thanks for supporting the channel, see you in the next video.